big effect that we have on this earth and on the environment is our consumption. What do we buy as individuals? How much do we consume? And how does this consumption affect the environment? And the big thing is that we should become aware of what we buy and where our products and our goods are coming from. So in the whiteboard, I have a depiction of what it would be to be a cow. So I drew a cow. It's not the best picture, but I just want to show how when a cow grows to its potential, when it's an adult, it's an adult in 77 weeks. So this is when it's eating its natural food, which would be grass. And this is because cows are known to be herbivores. But with all these transnational corporations like Tyson, who own the cows, have changed the dynamic of their food system by having the cow to eat corn. Corn, which has been genetically modified to be big, okay? When initially, corn was just a tiny plant. But then with GMO, genetically modified modifications, we ended up having a big corn. So feeding corn to the cows will make the cow grow in about forty two weeks. So this is the effect that it has. And because they feed corn to the cows, this causes these two these two items cause methane gas so methane gas is being exposed to the environment is a lot worse than carbon dioxide being exposed into the environment and of course the way methane gas is produced is by the factory farming so I have the equation of methane gas and carbon dioxide and of course these two items don't equal each other in a chemical way but I just wanted to show how methane gas and carbon dioxide are two things, two big factors that harm the environment because these are greenhouse gases and these gases being exposed to the air and our environment is very harmful but methane gas is 23 times more harmful than carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide, um, let's say it's, it, there's many things that um, implement carbon dioxide, but for a, an example, it would be a car. A car will produce carbon dioxide by how the gas is being used and it being exposed to the air. And for methane gas, a cow that has been fed with corn will produce methane gas. So cow and a car. And they're two different factors. 
the cows produce methane gas is based on the fact that they're eating corn and the way they digest this corn is by, of course, them pooping out and within that, um, they also burp and they also fart, which exposes the methane gas. And all this is from from obtaining uh, a, a growth of 77 weeks to reducing that to 42 weeks. And what that does is that it of course, we're going to have more cows to grow to their adult size more rapidly. But we're doing it in such a way that it's not natural anymore. And you as an individual should know what you're eating and what and where your food is coming from. So a big part of, of this idea is to know where your food is coming from and also if it's locally grown. If you buy from a co-op or a store that is local, local to your area, for example, I shop at Seward Co-op, which has the, the produce that goes into Seward Co-op comes from Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, North Dakota, South Dakota, and I got this information from actually talking to a worker there and how a lot of the meat actually comes from northern Minnesota and even some regions in Canada, but everything is just there. They don't go offside and try and obtain bananas from Ecuador or obtain their pineapples from Hawaii or their coconuts from Mexico. They're not really trying to be in this chain of the global production network. So there are many ways the consumption that an individual intakes can be reduced and can have a less harmful impact on the environment. Of course, we humans want to survive. And in order to survive, we do need to have some sort of consumption. We need to eat and we need to survive in many ways. So we need to have a home. And the main thing is that you can reduce your consumption based on having awareness of where your food production, where your food is coming from. And just being aware of where it's coming from and how it's being made and how it gets into the grocery store that you purchased it in. And another thing is that you should also be aware based on not the environment, but for yourself, for your health, and knowing that what you eat really impacts your body. Eating less meat will also be a big factor into the reduction of, of many things, not just the environment, but for yourself. Eating less meat is a good way of you intaking other, other foods such as fruits and vegetables. So instead of intaking a lot of meat, find substitutes. Because at the end of the day, you, if, you, if we as a population can reduce our consumption of meat, that would be a great, great help for the environment. I myself have been a vegetarian for six months and I feel great. 
I noticed a huge impact in my energy within the first two to three weeks. And I just felt more energetic and it, it was good. And I won't lie and say that I haven't eaten any meat within the, the, this six months, but sure, I've, I've eaten meat once a month within the last six months. And the big thing for me was that I did it for this, for the fact that I wanted to reduce my consumption of meat. And it's been a life-changing decision for me. And I am very happy that I initiated and I took that idea of saying, hey, I don't want to eat meat anymore. And yeah, it's been, it's been good. I feel a lot stronger and a lot of people have been somewhat judgmental, but something that I've learned is that we have been given this idea that we need to eat meat in our society, but it's not really necessary. Um, sure, we humans are omnivores, and we pretty much can eat anything, but everything comes down to the individual. We as individuals are the ones that can affect the world, and it's little by little. So. Where are you buying your food? Where is your food coming from? What are you actually eating? Are the questions that you should ask yourself for the environment and for your health.